my little show uh, introduction, if you don't mind. Um, so welcome to the Silk and Steel podcast. I'm your host, Carl Zha. And today we have a very interesting topic because um, I'm invited to talk about the Chinese space program by, um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, Gerald? Did Gerard. Ger it said in Spanish is like something like Gerard or something like that. Okay. Or so, is... so Gerald, well, well, actually, why don't you introduce yourself? You know, what do you do? Who, who, I'm what, just... What made, you, what made you interested in Chinese space program? Uh, well, I'm Gerard Gonzalez. I'm a journalism student here in Barcelona. And it's not uh, it's not just only uh, about a Chinese space program. It's um, the career to the moon, because uh, mm -hmm. in the last uh, something like the ten years, um, there was some some kind of ac acceleration. Uh, I don't really know the word uh, towards this career to to arrive to the moon and to see uh, what what we can do uh, from there, because uh, the moon, it serves as a, a, a trampoline. I don't uh, yeah, like, sure. uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sure, I mean, the... like the, the, the trip to the moon is very exciting, right? I mean, it's, 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 it has been very exciting ever since the first moon mission. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you are reaching out to me to talk about this topic because uh, you know, space program. It's, ooh, it's, <laughs> every, I think a lot of people are interested in the space program, uh, mm -hmm. especially since we were little kids. But uh, what I can talk about, what I am actually more interested uh, is like the history of the Chinese uh, space program. I don't know if yeah. that's what you're looking for, because yeah, that's what because, I um, th That's the problem, because uh, about the, the United States space program, I heard uh, a lot of things and uh, about the um, European uh, Special Space Agency, I heard a, a lot of things because, well, Spain um, uh, collaborate, uh, cooperates with it. But uh, about China, uh, I had this problem that I don't really find the, the information I need. I know that also, I think that the missions of the, the, the missions of the, space, the China space program are a secret, so I don't really ca uh, can catch it. But I uh, last day two years two two days ago was the Chen G five. I don't know how it's uh, how it say that uh, went to the moon to take some uh, to take a proof of the of the soil and to oh, the to... Chang'e five, yeah, Chang Chang'e yeah, five mission. Chang'e five. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's it's that uh, I I want to to know uh, uh, well uh, two things. Uh, I have uh, an uncle Sam poster uh, here, but it doesn't um, just doesn't belong to my beliefs. And all that is something that I bought uh, like ten years ago. And just uh -huh. to clarify like that, and also um, this is for my um, international relations uh, subject. Uh, yeah. I. I'm preparing an, a final project about about this, about the, rela the international relations that mm -hmm. uh, could, uh, well, how it will be established in the moon. Uh, the, uh, for example, the, the deep space gate, it's something mm -hmm. like an orbital base around the moon, uh, like the International Space Station, but around the moon. And well, the, this career to, to arrive there. So oh. yeah, I want to know a little bit about the okay. China's oh. uh, yeah, I I, first, I want to give you first like the background, background history of the Chinese space program. Um, and I want to start with like the father of Chinese space, space program, a very famous person, uh, Chen Xuesen, because this, I think this will also tie back to your field of international relations, because this is a fascinating uh, history behind it. So, uh, so the, 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 the father of Chinese space program, Chen Xuesen, um, actually went to study in the United States in 1935. Uh, this was, uh, so I'm going way back. Uh, he went to United States to, to study on the Boxer Indemnity Scholarship at MIT. So Boxer uh, Indemnity Scholarship was established when, um, as a result of uh, Boxer Rebellion, 
in 1900 when uh, eight nations invaded China. So United States, UK, uh, Russia, uh, uh, France, Germany, Italy, uh, and Austria-Hungary. Uh, s s basically, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> so eight na uh, and Japan and Japan. So that's eight. So eight nations went to China, uh, defeated China. Um, uh, you know, they sacked Beijing, and as as a result, China had to pay a lot of money uh, called the Boxer Indemnity. And it turns out China paid extra to the United States. So there was an argument in U.S. about what to do with this excess of payment. Uh, there was an argument about returning this money back to China and, and then how to return it. So in the end, the U.S. President uh, Theodore Roosevelt decided to establish a scholarship with, a, with the excess amount of money that they need to return to China. So they set up uh, uh, this uh, boxer indemnity scholarship to have sponsored Chinese students to come to United States to study. So the idea is... Uh, you will help with the U.S. Soft, soft power, right? And, 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 you know, basically cultivate the next generation of Chinese leaders who are uh, more pro-U.S. So in 1935, Chen Hui-sung went to U.S. on the scholarship. He studied at MIT. And, and after he got his uh, PhD, uh, after he graduated at MIT, he, I believe he pursued his uh, PhD or postdoc in Caltech. And in fact, he was uh, hired on as a faculty. He was a professor at Caltech. And that's when he became involved. At, at this time, you know, uh, rocket science was just kind of just beginning in the United States. So, so Chen Xuesen was actually the founder of JPL, the Jet uh, Propulsion Lab Laboratory in, in Pasadena, which was attacked attached to the Caltech, uh, 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 which is California Institute of Technology. Um, and JPL, as you might know, is uh, now today is very tightly, um, is work very closely with NASA um, on the US space program. And, and so after World War II, uh, so during World War II, you know, China and US were allies and, and Chen Xuesen decided after decided to stay in U.S., uh, pursue his academic career. You know, as I mentioned, he taught at Caltech. He founded, he was a co-founder of JPL. And after the war was over, he, him and his, uh, his uh, um, mentor, um, von Karman, went to Germany to interview the Nazi scientists who work on the V-2 rockets. Um, so the, the, the person, so, so um, Chen Xuesen actually went as uh, with the title of U United States Army Colonel, um, and he interrogated then was a Nazi uh, scientist, Von Braun. And as you know, Von Braun is actually would become the father of US space program later. So, so you know, you, you had the father of future Chinese space program interrogating the father of future U.S. space program in Germany after World War II. And, and so they, uh, in the end, you know, von Braun did make uh, his way from Germany to U.S. and become he headed NASA, right, and, and the U.S. space program and, and then the U.S. Uh, mission to the moon eventually. And whereas uh, Chen Xuesen led a different path, because in 1950, uh, so Chen Xuesen, uh, he went back to China. Uh, he got married, but he came back in the United States in 1947 because you know he had a, his whole career career in U.S. and he had you know high high level clearance to work in the U.S. government and work on very exciting you know uh, rocket science, and then. Uh, in 1950, this is around the time when Korea war, uh, Korean War broke out, and uh, so the the McCarthyism uh, era started in the United States, where there's a uh, there's a witch hunt against communists in U.S. And it turns out, so during the time when Chen Xuesen was staying at Caltech, you know, he made a lot of friends within the, his academic circles. And he went to a party 
hosted by um, uh, Oppenheimer's uh, younger brother in Caltech. And, 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 and there were a lot of communist, uh, American communist members who were present at the party. And now there was a case that was opened against uh, people or like the other, um, other member, members at Caltech who went to the party and Chan Xueson was involved because he's uh, somehow there was also a, a, a list of American co um, Communist Party membership at Caltech that had Chan Xueson's name on it. And, and then in, in 1947, when uh, Chan Xueson came back from China to inside to United States, um, as part, you know, as part of the China, United States immigration process, he was asked a question, you know, are you a member of Communist Party or a communist organization? And he said no. So, so US government said, okay, so you, uh, uh, you possibly lied uh, basically in the immigration process for coming back to US. And, and for, for that, they held, basically they held him on a technicality. Uh, they actually sent him to a low security prison in Los Angeles, in, in Long Beach. Um, as, at, at around that time, Chen Xuesen decided, he realized his career is coming to an end in US. His security clearance was being revoked. Um, and, and, you know, that means he can no longer work on all the top uh, cutting edge technology anymore because he, he no longer have the security clearance. And so he wanted to return to China. This, this also, 1950 was also the time when uh, Mao's Communist Party <coughs> won the Chinese Civil War. They established the People's Republic of China. And, and Chen Xuesen's wife, uh, Jiang Ying, the, the, the woman he went back to China to marry in 1947, she has a lot of contact uh, you know, among her classmates in the Chinese government and who are also helping, hoping to get Chen Xuesen uh, and another, his generation of Chinese students studying in the United States to come back to China to help China develop its own science programs. <laughs> and, so Chen Jason decided that's what he was going to do after he got out of uh, after he got out of jail. He had he had uh, everything packed up, ready to go. But um, the U.S. government went through his uh, the stuff he was sending to China, and supposedly they found something uh, with label top secret, right? And and then they they detained him again and saying you know he was trying to export classified material to China. And again, he, he, he made the, um, uh, Chen Yuesen made the argument that most of the material uh, that was paper he drafted himself. And they have also, also that it was used to be classified information, but no longer, it's outdated. But it doesn't matter because this was a very special time in the United States. This was during the time of McCarthy, uh, McCarthy, thim, era, there was a witch hunt basically in the United States for anybody who, who is potentially a yeah. communist. Mm -hmm. So, so then uh, Chen Xuesen then was held under house arrest uh, for five years in U.S. Uh, at the start of this, Chen Xuesen went to see the U.S. Secretary of Navy, Kimball, uh, who he know personally. And, and Kimball told him, you know, I, I don't think you're a communist. Uh, but Chen Xuesen is like, okay, it doesn't matter. I, I made up my mind. I'm going to return to China. And Kimbo said, no, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to allow you to return to China. Um, and so there was a secret um, uh, diplomatic negotiation between China and United States for five years over the fate of Chen Xuesen and a group of other Chinese students and scientists who are waiting to return. Um, but Kimbo was our, uh, the, the U.S. Secretary of Navy was arguing that, you know, Chen Xuesen alone was worth two divisions of soldiers, right? Like, why would we allow this guy to go back to China? Um, whereas the, uh, the, the, the Chinese, uh, the, the, the U.S. immigration, uh, uh, the I, uh, INS, the, the, the immigration department, they want to deport him because they, they say, oh, because when Chen Xuesen came into the United States in 1947, he said he was not a member of the Communist Party, but we found uh, his name on a, 
on the membership of the American Communist Party, uh, you know, membership at Caltech. So he lied on his, uh, you know, uh, his his uh, return. So so that's our we we need to re deport him per our bureaucratic process, right? So there was like a gov governmental fight between the different U.S. government agency as well, and uh, on top of that, there was um, the the, the diplomatic effort between China and U.S. Eventually, um, you know, we don't know exactly the details of um, of the negotiation, mm -hmm. but China released a group of American pilots who were was shot down in China for on spy uh, on spy missions. So, so there's some spy planes in China were shot down. Some American pilots were held. So in the, uh, in effect, they were exchanged. For Chen Jueshen. So by 1955, Chen Jueshen was finally allowed to leave for Hong Kong. And him and his family went back to China. Uh, you know, they were welcomed. Uh, and for obvious reasons, Chen Jueshen was very embittered by his experience in the United States. And so he devoted himself to build the, uh, you know, the, the Chinese uh, rocket program, right? Because he, that, that, that's his background. Mm. But um, so that and, and Chen Jueshen, this was also the time when China was developing um, a, a, a series of uh, weapon programs, including nuclear weapons. Um, but you know, it's it's not enough to have nukes. You need a delivery system, right? So, so but the, the <laughs> but the yeah, yeah but, planes were outdated. Uh, and yeah, we it's better to just launch a missile to the other uh, part of the world and. Take, take yes. a plane to there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, the rockets uh, and and ballistic missile basically are the same thing, yeah. right? So, so Chen Jueshen was tasked to uh, build the Chinese missile program. Um, he was headed. He was heading the Chinese missile program. But there were some. I mean, I read different uh, biographies. There were some. Some people argue the reason uh, U.S. actually held him for five years is because so that. That uh, by the time he was released back to China, the technology was already out of date, right? Because the even in the rocket science, it moves very fast in those five years. Yeah, um, um, NASA, NASA, it I think that it has this policy that uh, it publishes. I I don't know if it publishes all the data about the their programs, but they, they publish uh, a lot of data because it's a public uh, agency or something like that. I, they have some kind of policy. So yeah, finally, after some years, the the, the data yeah. becomes updated, outdated, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So so because I mean, for example, is uh, uh you know, when when uh, Chen Jueshen started, it was the rockets were still fueled by liquid fuel, right? Um, but but by 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 1955, by the time he returned to China, the technology already moved on to use solid fuel. To fuel the rockets. Well, that's more for the the weapon program because uh, you know because it takes a long time to 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 pump the liquid fuel into into a missile. You know, like whereas if you have a solid fuel, it's a lot easier to move your missiles around, uh, a lot quicker to launch your missile in the air. So anyway, but at the same time, China had a lot of uh, by 1955 though, but China also have a, a new generation of scientists. Who were trained in USSR because at the time, you know, China and USSR were in their honeymoon period, uh, being both communist countries. So China sent a lot of students. So whereas before, China used to send students to United States, like a generation of Chinese. Uh, and starting from 1950, the, the brightest Chinese students went to Soviet Union to study. Uh, but they came back. They came back with the Russian technology because you know Russia was also developing its own weapon program and space program. So, so com this combined expertise of the older generation, Chen Xuesen, who who acted more kind of like the project coordinator. He's like the director of the overall program, uh, and the new generation of scientists trained in Soviet Union. Uh, they come together to build. Uh, the, 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 the Chinese space program slash ballistic, ballistic missile program. And so by 19, um, 
uh, you know, China went through some internal political turmoil. You know, there was a cultural revolution um, from 1966 to 1976. But uh, so there was some setback because a lot of the scientists were <laughs> sent down to the countryside to tend pigs, tend to, uh, to raise pigs. Uh, but, uh, but people like Chen Xuesen, they were protected because they were working for the army, for the military, the Chinese uh, military. Um, and they were able to continue their work. So by 1980, uh, that's when China launched its uh, first ICBM uh, test. Um, and, and then, um, but from 1980, um, but then from 1980 to, uh, to 1990, this was a period where China emerged out of the Cultural Revolution. And uh, the new leader, Deng Xiaoping, decided to place um, emphasis on economic development rather than military, right? So, so a lot of the funding, the, the, the defense funding were cut. And, and so, so whereas before, uh, China was concentrating on building uh, the bigger, bigger ballistic missiles to de deliver <laughs> nuclear weapons. Uh, now they have to find uh, more civilian use for their technology. And so that's when they started to focus more on launching satellites, hmm. right? And, and they also started to launch commercial satellites for other countries outside of China um, because they, they need to turn profit. And then uh, in, in, in the decade of 90s up to up to 1990, uh, from uh, the decade of 80s up to 1990s, China still was in a honeymoon period with the United States after the Nixon visit uh, to China. And, and there was a lot of cooperation, both military and the dual use technology, in, in, in including rockets. Um, in fact, um, in 1990s, when, when the Chinese uh, uh, trying to work switch from the military application more to like the civilian use to to the uh, civilian space program uh, they they got help from u.s company like the hughes um, you know the they they hughes engineer actually went to china to work very close because this was also you know in the background of cold war china united states wanted china to join the western camp against soviet union that's why there was also the the, the technology sharing between US and China. And, and in fact, in the early 90s, um, there were still a lot of problem with, uh, with the Chinese uh, long march rockets. Because you know, the, the, the Chinese named their, their rockets uh, after long march, which is this communist expedition back in the 30s. Um, but they have every generation, they have a new, uh, you know, new, new, new type coming out. Now we're on uh, long March five, right? So, but um, in nineties, they had this experience a series of setbacks with the Long March uh, rocket because they, they had a couple um, failures of satellite launch, like in a row, uh, the, the, the rockets blew up. And so they had the, the American uh, Hughes engineers to come in and to help them to provide feedbacks, to help them troubleshoot. Um, and, and that actually helped the Chinese space program. They were able to fix the problem and, and have the, make the improve better um, long march rockets. So after the, the fa couple of failures in 1990s, um, you know, the Chinese rocketry became more reliable. There, there was, suddenly there was a, a, a lot less failure. And, and in fact, for this, Hughes got into trouble in US because, <laughs> because what happened again, you know, after the collapse of Soviet Union in 1992, and suddenly, you know, China doesn't, United States doesn't need this kind of pseudo alliance with China anymore. And the US Congress uh, were questioning, why are we working with China on, on rockets, right? Which potentially have the dual use technology to use for ballistic missiles. And they actually blame uh, Hughes for doing not a tech, tech transfer to the Chinese. And, and in fact, I remember, I was already in uh, in United States at the time in 1990. I remember there was multiple congressional hearings against Hughes and basically Hughes was uh, chewed out by, by US government for having worked 
with with Chinese engineers in the past, even though you know back then it was okay. It's no yeah. longer okay. So that that's actually set a trend. So starting from 1990s, um, even though China very much would like to uh, join the international space effort and to have kind of like the cooperation with uh, with uh, you know with Europe with with uh, with Russia with United States but US is the one that's holding out um, so in fact US rejected China from the uh, international space station effort because um, China was a latecomer to the to the to the international uh, space exploration like I say you know China was um, Emerge, emerge out of a cultural revolution just in 1970s. And then he was trying to get into the space, trying to build up the space program yeah. in late 80s, early 90s. So, so it was uh, by the time when the International Space Station was already grandfathered in by, you know, US, Russia, European Union, you know, and I think also Japan. Yeah. And each member has a veto. <laughs> who gets who gets included and and us you know Russia, you know russia you you eu um japan none of them have problem with with china joining in but us said no no we don't want china we don't want to do any technology uh, transfer to china we don't want to share any knowledge with them so that is why uh in the end china was forced to go alone because uh of, you know from china's perspective um China see itself as a great power. It, it, it see itself as re-emerging from after um, a, a, what they call century of humiliation when, when it was beat, beaten down by uh, um, foreign powers. And so he wants to kind of, wants to have the prestige of ha hosting a space program. You know, that, that's what's important to China, to have the prestige to say, we also we also are going to the moon. We're also sending a man to the space. Um, the U.S. was not very keen on that, um, so China ended up having to go alone. Um, you know, without China was basically banned from uh, the international space uh, station effort. So that's what when China decided propose. Okay, we're just going to build our own space station, um, and it was made uh, possible because. Uh, since 1990s, Ch Chinese economy have been growing uh, leap and bounds. Uh, and now China actually have can fund its own um, uh, space uh, space effort, right? So um, in um, so I'm I'm trying to work my way to the present here. <laughs> I started I, I, well. Like I I remember that um, I think that in during the Obama's administration. Uh, was when China was banned from cooperation with the uh, NASA programs, uh, if I don't remember uh, wrongly. So I think that uh, there was some kind of cooperation between those uh, 90s and, and 2010 yeah. years. Uh, but then I think that uh, because the um, how China was becoming more and more powerful, um, uh, the Congress said, step down, uh, we have to, the, uh, they declared China Space, the China's space program, uh, a rival. Rivalry. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. the the U.S. I I because so I moved to United States in 1990. Um, I remember, the, I so I moved to U.S. right around the end of the Cold War, and and I remember there was a talk about at that time there was a talk about okay now the Cold War is over maybe U.S. doesn't have to maintain. Um, devote a huge portion of its budget to the defense. Maybe we can do some de defense uh, cuts, right? And, and so-called the, uh, the peace dividend, right? But then uh, the US, uh, uh, US national security establishment like the P Pentagon, they start come up with, oh, wait, 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 Soviet Union is gone, but we still have China, you know? So they try to propose this China threat. But back back in 1990, it it sounds pretty silly because back in 1990, China was still very poor. Um, I mean, it's much weaker compared to former Soviet Union. It just didn't seem very re real, even you know, as much as the uh, Pentagon was trying to sell the idea of China's threat. In 1990, it didn't seem it. It just seems like a silly idea. But 
but by two, I, I, there was a shift in 2008. So that, I remember that was a year of 2008 Beijing Olympics. Um, and it also coincided with uh, the great financial crisis that, that hit both United States and Europe. Uh, in, in fact, hit the, it was a global crisis. And at the time when the, uh, you know, before 2008, I think for Americans, a lot of Americans, their, their perception of China was still like this very poor backward country. Um, like their, their idea of China is like China in the 19th century or, or in 1960s, you know, everybody wear mouse suit and ride bicycles or wear like this farmer's coolie hats and work in the fields, right? And in 2008, when the Olympics was finally uh, broadcasted in like many American households, and people suddenly discover, holy crap, you know, China actually was developing into a modern nation. And at the same time, when there was a big financial crisis hitting the West. So there was a lot of anxiety in US about uh, its own place in the world. You know, the US is now become worried that it's um, it's, it's place as a world hegemon is going to be threatened. It's going to be threatened by China. So that's why there's like this talk about, about containing China, including in the space pool, including in the space program, right? So that's why they, they didn't want it to work with China anymore on, on any space missions. Um, and, and that is the background why China had to go alone, essentially. But, uh, and around, um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, also in the decade of 80s, because Deng Xiaoping wanted to concentrate on economy, you know, a lot of the funding was diverted away from like defense research and including the space program, which kind of attached to the defense spending. Uh, but then that's why they had to do a lot of a uh, commercial launch of satellites in 1990s to kind of make up for the loss of state funding. And then in, um, then Gulf War happened. <laughs> when Gulf War happened, um, and then also follow up was uh, the, the US bombing of Chinese embassy in Belgrade in 1999. So after that, um, it, was, it was, you know, US call it the shock and awe, right, Gulf War. And you really did shock and awe the Chinese leadership. And they realized they're really behind in terms of military technology compared to United States. So that's when during Jiang Zemin era in starting from late 90s and early 2000s, they, they start to divide, um, divert more funds to you know, both the military research, but also the space program, right? And, and, so, and also then the, the, they started to, because um, I remember in, in 1980s, when I was growing up in China, there was already talking about going to the moon, right? Like I, 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 we, I kind of, we're all hoping as little kids growing up in China that, you know, China is going to follow the Soviet Union and U.S. to go to the moon or go to the space. Um, but that was kind of put on hold for two decades because, you know, China has other priorities like grow its economy. But by 2000, you know, China started to, you know, have some money to, to spend on the space program. And that's when they started the, restarted the, uh, the space program. And so that's when, when we had the first, um, uh, the, the Chinese um, astronaut going to the space, right? That, that happened, I think that's in early 2000. I don't, I don't remember the exact date now. I have to look it up. Um, and, after that, the moon mission is supposed to be follow up, right? Um, I mean, going to the space uh, uh, for the Chinese, a lot of that was, uh, you know, they recycle old Soviet technology. Um, you know, after the, in fact, after the collapse of uh, Soviet Union, China benefited uh, from a lot of te technology transfer from former Soviet Union. Uh, you know, China actually hired a lot of the former Russian scientists who were now uh, basically essentially laid off. Um, so with that kind of knowledge transfer, uh, you know, the, 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 the first Chinese space program uh, to space, Ch the first Chinese manned space program, that was based on basically the old Soviet technology of 1960s, right? Um, but, you know, but the Russians, the, 
USSR, they didn't, they didn't land, they didn't have a manned mission to the moon, though, right? The United States is still the only nation that has landed someone in the moon. So, so, so China, as a great power, it wants to, um, to accomplish that, you know, as, as a prestige project. So, so that's why we're seeing right now what we're you know China has been sending uh, more and more lunar missions. You know, the first was uh, they call it the Chang'e mission. Chang'e in Chinese is a name for the Chinese goddess of the moon, right? So we're on the Chang'e five, number five. You know, the, before there was Chang'e one, Chang'e two, Chang'e three. Before um, you know, it was the first. It was get to the moon unmanned mission, right? Um, with a for, with a with a rover, um, the they have the so the so the the land the the mission is called Chang'e, but they have um, they have a Chinese uh, uh, la, uh, a moon rover called Yu Two. Uh, Yu Two is uh, in Chinese means J Rabbit. Uh, so in Chinese mythology, uh, the moon goddess Chang'e lives by herself on the moon with her. J uh, no, I, uh, just the la last week, I heard, I watched a film in Netflix that was um, uh, Over to the Moon or something Over like this. Over the that, Moon. Over the Moon. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just uh, what you're talking Well, in, not what you're talking about, but I mean that um, it's uh, uh, you can see that, that the, they are focusing on the moon. Uh, I think that it can be a coincidence. Uh, I think that it... Well it has First, some... over, the, over the moon is american movie so they're trying to cash in on the chinese market that's why they're made they made that movie but it, 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 it wasn't was produced on... it wasn't produced by uh with uh, some chinese companies i think the... no 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 so so over over the moon is a hollywood production but i think it might be funded by chinese money because right now there's a lot of cooperation between uh, there's a lot of Chinese investment into Hollywood now, right? So, so I have to look. I mean, it may well be funded by by Chinese money, uh, but I, it's a Hollywood production. A lot of the, a lot of the voice actors, actors, they're all like Asian Americans, um, <laughs> and so, so yeah. But but it's based on the it's a, it's a Chinese story, and it's based on the Chinese mythology. Uh, so if you, you watch the, if you watch the. The animation, you will know the Chinese legend of the, the moon goddess Tanga, who lives in the moon by herself with uh, with, with the her, rabbit, yeah, with the rabbit, yeah. <laughs> her rabbit is her companion, the J rabbit. So, so that's how the Chinese uh, moon mission is named after. A uh, Tanga is named after the moon goddess, and then the lander, uh, the the moon rover is Kao Yu too. That's the J rabbit. It's named after the J rabbit. Named after the rabbit. Um, so. So this is followed by this, the Chinese moon mission is followed by millions and millions of people in China. They have uh, like every time they do the the launch and the, the to the moon, you know, they they post this information on Weibo, which is a Chinese social media, kind of like Twitter, um, and and they will post some videos and and like I mean tens of thousands of people comments, you know, click like, repost. Um, so with the latest uh, Chang'e 5 mission, they, you know, that's, I just go to Weibo, type in like the hashtag Chang'e 5, you know, I come up with all they had, I, I can find all the videos. Uh, I mean, I, the, the person I told you, Andrew Jones, he's, um, he's American, uh, kind of the space uh, oh, watcher. Yeah, yeah he, he watched the Chinese uh, space program. I mean, he gets a lot of his information from the Chinese social media, right? Because, uh, and uh, so you, you did mention that the Chinese uh, space program is kind of secretive, mm -hmm. right? But now they're releasing more information. But, mm -hmm. but right now, a lot of the information is uh, geared towards the Chinese public. Mm -hmm. So they will be publishing in Chinese on Chinese social media like Weibo, right? So. Um, so that's why a lot of the American uh, Chinese space program watchers, they would go to the Chinese social media, <laughs> you know, to, to follow this development. And, and that's what I essentially do too. I get their videos from Weibo and, and then repost them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it's, it's, it's very exciting. This is uh, uh, 
this is just a build up, you know, the eventual goal for China is still to have its own manned mission to the moon. Right. And right now they're doing uh, just you know, gradually more and more. And as you mentioned, the, 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 the Tang'e 5 mission, their goal is to uh, land on the moon and gather, um, gather moon samples and, and return it to earth. And, and actually they have a very, um, they have very good instruction videos to, to, to explain to the public how the process works. I posted a video on my Twitter. Yeah, uh, I, I went to that. Yeah, yeah basically the, it, yeah. The, the, the bunch of Chinese scientists, they, they, they all uh, have labels, you know, the, I'm the, this part of the rockets, I'm part of this uh, moon lander. And they show you the process of how the rocket is launched to the earth, uh, from the earth, you know, um, enter the lunar orbit, and they, then, then they send this, after the separation of the stage, they have a, a, the moon lander lands on the moon um, after the, the gather sample, and then they launch back up from the moon, and, and they will rejoin um, the orbiter uh, and yeah. Yeah, re they will rejoin one of the vehicles that was still, uh, um, uh, still in the lunar orbit mm -hmm. and they will catch that and then return to earth. So, so right now where we are, we're, we're already have the moon landing. So we had a successful launch uh, successful orbiting of the moon, and they already have the separation of the lander. So the lander already landed in the, on the moon. Right now, it's gathering sample. Right now, um, I haven't checked uh, Twitter or or Weibo in the last few hours, so I don't know when they're gonna <laughs> get the uh, launch the sample back. Um, uh, when it's gonna return to Earth? But it, it's it's very it's very exciting stuff. Um, uh, but it, it's still the, the eventual goal is still to have a, a manned mission back to the moon. And now it's actually now there's a there's a race, right? There's a race back to the moon because um, let's face it, that original U.S. moon mission was to beat the Soviet Union. Yeah. Because uh, because after USSR launched a man in space, that launched the kind of the, the race to the moon. And and U.S. were successful with the Apollo mission to the moon, and but after that, after the Apollo mission, and uh, especially after the collapse of the Soviet Union, there was a long hiatus because there's no longer <laughs> there was a no longer a contest, uh, and, and less motivation. And now that China appeared on the scene, you know, became the third nation to launch to you know to launch lunar probes and to do sample return. Well, if this mission is successful, hopefully, if they, if they successfully re return lunar sample back from the moon to Earth, China will become the third nation after Soviet Union, uh, United States to have done so, right? So, so but, but now, um, now it kind of light a fire under the US, uh, under NASA, right? And then, because now, it, you you know us also cares about prestige they don't want to be showed up by the chinese mm -hmm. so now now you know nasa is talking about you know getting more fundings to um you know possibly return to the moon uh so so i think it's very exciting for us uh who, who are excited about about space in general i mean in a way i think competition is good i mean whatever to to get more humans to space. <laughs> um, oh, oh, by the way, you, you, since you mentioned Netflix, there's a actually American TV show called Space Force. Yeah, I, watch it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it recently. The first season, it's great. I mean, mm -hmm. it it kind of it kind of reflect kind of the American mentality to the space race with China because it, it, in the the TV series Space uh, Force, it clearly marked China as the competitor, right? Uh, I mean, that, that's how you, you American think about it. Um, but but right now we I think for the Chinese perspective, they're they're just more interested in doing this as a prestige project mm -hmm. to prove that yeah we can also do this now. But it's important too because uh, well, I have some some thinking about the moon and 
it's important just because uh, as i said uh, you can from the moon you can go anywhere in the well relatively but uh, it's a launching pad it's a launching yeah, pad it's a launching yeah. pad to the to the to you the need it because the there uh, if you develop the means to um, to have to produce a uh, um, not oil, I mean uh, combustible. Uh, I uh, minerals, I mean, you know, to, to mine the moon, right? Moon mining, that's what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and, and to find the the, the propellants uh, for the rockets and it, all that you don't have to take from the earth to the moon and you mm -hmm. can have it there. So uh, you will... Um, uh, uh, but but that what you're talking about that's actually what Elon Musk is trying to do with SpaceX, right? I mean, yeah. like that's he, the he Artemis Accords and yeah yeah, yeah. and it's yeah, it but, needs, it's really interesting because uh, there's uh, there's these uh, well it's always uh, that um, from forty years ago that uh, it's been talking all about the Mars to arrive to Mars and to establish a colony in Mars, but. The moon, it's very, very important because uh, you need it to go to Mars. Yes. And it's this career that it's happening right now. And I think that China uh, has made some great steps uh, towards it because in the last 10, 20 years, it's achieving uh, the, the, well, uh, this proof uh, of the 10 G5. I don't, <laughs> don't know how to, to say it, but. Uh, it's something that it hasn't been done in the last, I think, 40 years. So yeah. it's, it's something that it's happening right now and it's, it's, it's interesting and it's very important. And the deep space, uh, pro, uh, the deep space gate that it will serve from as, la, as, a, as a base for the um, established colonies in the moon. It, it's something that it's happening. Oh, yeah. I yeah, I, so yeah, the Tonga 5 mission, if successful, that will be the first since I think 1976 or something. Mm -hmm. that, that's the year I was born. <laughs> so 40, so more than 40 years, it will be the first uh, mission, mission of that nature. So, so far, like, it's like there's has been a long hiatus in, in the space uh, race because you know, there was no more race after USSR was gone. I mean, it, it seems like the US wanted to get to the, who wants to get go to the moon first? After US won with Apollo mission, then everybody's like, okay, we're down here. And, but now there's more impetus because of great power competition between China and United States, you know, it's kind of a, uh, <clears throat> um, so, so, I mean, I, I think it's good. It's, I, I, I like to see, um, I just, you know, we, we, we probably, our generation grew up being you know, on like Star Wars, Star Trek, you know, <laughs> we, we, want we, to we really like to go to the moon, yeah. really, yeah, we, yeah. We, we, we really like, like. The, we like to see the human explorations of the, of the space. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like the, the, there's have already been multiple, you know, I, I know India, they're launching their own Mars mission, um, you know, because they, 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 they also have their, you know, they, they, India also see itself as a great power, right? They also want to have the prestige program of, of space. And after the China has uh, launched a man to space, you know, India, they had, had announced that, you know, their, their uh, Mars mission, right? They already, India already sent a, a pro, Mars probe. Um, so, so they are all, also making a lot of progress on their end. So it's going to be very exciting, I think, the next uh, 10 years to see uh, more and more uh, human endeavors in space. I mean, I I'm excited. And uh, also, I think the um, something that comes to my mind that because uh, to establish a colony in the moon, it's important to, to have it in, in, the, in the poles. Poles, mm. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Northern, so uh, it's, yeah. it's the world. Uh, Pose, yeah, yeah, north and south. Okay, pose okay. The, yeah. uh, because uh, there the, the light um, uh, goes straight, so it, you have more light uh, during a lot of days because the I think that it lasts twenty eight days. Uh, the moon. Yeah, because of the 14. because of the angle where the yeah. sunlight hit. Yes. And you need it yeah. there be, uh, just because that because you have the power to to for the so photovoltaic uh, power panels. 
and also because well the those last missions uh, one of those uh, was uh, I think the only one uh, cooperation between NASA and the Chinese agencies uh, in space uh, about finding some, not water, but some kind of explodable uh, uh, mo molecules of water that uh, it can mm. be uh, mined and maybe used for, for um, having... And I and I think that uh, the current Chang'e 5 mission, uh, if, if successful, hopefully successful, if successfully return the lunar sample back to uh, Earth, it's basically a prototype of lunar mining, right? Because the same process can then be perfected to actually uh, take, you know, if we can take a, a small sample of lunar material to space, uh, it's just, just a matter of scale it <laughs> and that's 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 a lunar uh, mining right there you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I, I i'm very excited <laughs> so i have this uh this question about the if uh, united states uh has a base in Pol uh, pole north or uh uh, well, the, the north okay pole. Yeah, let's say a moon base right okay let's yeah say um, north if north they north have north. a moon base there they will share it with china or they, there will still be like some kind you're, of competition. You're, you're, you're thinking about that uh, that TV show, uh, Space Force, now. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's something okay, that I mean, uh, I, I mean th there will be uh, future uh, cooperation missions with. Uh, I mean, China. I mean, I I think um, current, unfortunately, uh, like the, the uh, I would. Personally, I would like to see more international space cooperation, but mm -hmm. I think the, the, the politics of it um, at right now, it, it doesn't look like, you know, US and China is coming together anytime soon. So what, what most likely scenario is, um, you know, look at the um, polar station on earth, right? Mm -hmm. Different countries, uh, they have their own, build their own uh, science stations research station in the South Pole. Um, you know, like the, it was decided South Pole is belong to the whole, whole humanity. Nobody is gonna claim the South Pole, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so so each nation have built their own uh, polar stations in different areas of the South Pole. So I think that's probably most likely, likely scenario going forward. You know, maybe U.S. will have a moon base, China will have moon base, and hopefully it won't happen like the way that uh, Space Force ended their season one, <laughs> where they try to sabotage each other. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but I, I think realistically, we are probably going to look at looking at two separate uh, moon bases mm -hmm. instead of one consolidated international moon base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this point. Yeah, so, well, I have um, questions about wh uh, what will happen with uh, maybe uh, international law in, in, in those moon bases, uh, what will happen between, between them? It's something that I, I well, think... Well, I mean, I, mean the, I think there's already declaration that, you know... Yeah, uh, the... The it, moon, moon belongs to everyone, right? So. So I think most likely scenario is how the South Pole is being uh, explored scientifically currently. That that's my guess. Uh, you know, like because even even with all the progress, we're probably um, we're probably still at least ten years away from like serious moon mining, right? Like a like a commercial moon mining operation is probably at least ten years away, right? So we'll, we'll see. I mean, if they actually do moon mining, I mean that I can see that could be potentially conflict. But you know, like mm. how, who who can claim the resource on the moon, right? That then then, then you know that's uh, that's yeah, that, that's the Artemis Accords try to uh, try to go with this uh, because there was an agreement, uh, the Space Treaty in I think the 1967 or something like this, and uh, it was a court that the moon it doesn't belong to anyone, but the resources of the moon they can be uh, exploited and 
well, if a private right. company goes there and 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 takes the resources, uh, it belongs to them. I, not the not the land, oh. but the resources. And the Artemis Accords, uh, if I don't remember wrongly, well, it goes uh, with this line, and they try so, to. So if Elon Musk, his SpaceX goes to the moon, uh, start a moon mining operation, he will be entitled to. Uh, to get profit, derive profit from mining the moon, all the resources. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that, that, now I understand why he wants to do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It won't, be, um, it won't belong to, the, to him, the land, the land of the moon, but uh, uh, yeah, the profit that he takes, yeah. it's, for, it's for him. Yeah. Uh, and, and well, it's, it, it, yeah, the private, the private companies are also uh, something that it's really interesting because the, <clears throat> in the last 30, 40 years, it was all about the about the, the public agencies of the of those mm -hmm. states. But now the the private uh, companies uh, come to come to this and start to to uh, yeah, Nelson Musk starts to 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 make some some steps into this direction. So, so it's just not about the only the countries. It's ju it's yeah. also about the, the private companies. So. so so speaking of which, you know, since we're on the topic of Elon Musk and SpaceX, um, so you know, whenever a trend gets started in US, you know, China also keeps tabs on that and, and, and trying to deploy a successful model. So after uh, the successful SpaceX. Now there's like nine Chinese private space companies, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like they, they also basically modeled on SpaceX, you know, like they just had um, had a successful commercial launch, like I think less than a month ago of a Chinese uh, private launch company mm -hmm. who are like, I mean, I'm, I'm, they might be getting some funding from, from the Chinese state in the back end, like how space acts you know basically get nasa contract but um yeah yeah i mean like this is gonna be fascinating how that how the i mean how that legal issue gets to hammer it out when all these private companies start doing uh, lunar launches and lunar mining yeah it will be interesting mm -hmm. uh well uh, also i think that th those companies that they have um uh, the satellite uh, satellite uh, missions to to start, I mean Starlink and all these um, uh, all these missions they have also uh, they they have been very important for those companies because they are truly really establishing they are uh, focusing on on the space not uh, ju not just only the moon but yeah the space and they are. They are really important, and I think that people doesn't really uh, f uh, mind it when they uh, talk about uh, um, SpaceX and something like this. They just focus, oh yeah, arriving to the moon. But they are establishing really big networks of uh, satellites that, and just not Elon Musk, uh, Google, uh, Amazon. Uh, I think that it also have plans about this. And sometimes uh, private companies they they have they want to to also uh, they want to also uh, uh, build these uh, networks. So it's really interesting. Yeah, that... I mean that's how cap. Yeah, that's how capitalism works, right? <laughs> Everything gets commodified. <laughs> Everything gets commercialized. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, next decades will definitely be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't really have more questions. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I, I hope you got out. I hope you got out what you 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 were uh, hoping for because I, um, I I was scared you're gonna ask me specific question about about the Chinese uh, lunar mission or space program because I, I I'm like I I I I I watch them. I watch them the Chinese social media when they do a launch, but you know I haven't really looked into their uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. um, because I know this is, uh, 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 you know, they, they actually have uh, several more missions planned uh, mm -hmm. in, in the next few years for, for China after the success of Tango 5. You know, Tango 5 is not going to be the last of the Tango missions. There's going to be Tango 6, Tango 7, etc. It, it's all lined up. Um, 
and all staggered. So so it's going to be an exciting exciting decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, about uh, something that you that you uh, said before uh, about the how the how United States people uh, saw after the 2008 um, Beijing Olympics that well, it's not just a farmers' country as it was uh, in mind of everyone. Here in Spain, I think that it uh, still is believed that uh, China is just a, a farmer's country and it's like and it happened also to me uh, like in 2016 or something like this four years ago I I just um, uh, I noticed that uh, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't it it, uh, it, it isn't uh, and it was uh, really surprising how I know a lot of cities uh, from the United States that has two million people, three million people, but a city in China that has 10 million people, 20 million people, I don't know its name. I don't know what's happening there, but I can know what's happening in Detroit. I can know it's something that uh, it's silly yeah. in a kind yeah, of way. Also, yeah. you know, because uh, you know, for, also for for a long period of time, China was kind of cut off from like the global system, right? I mean, China really just really opened up in 1980s, and then since then, the development has just been very fast. I mean, I remember in 19, 1980, 1980 when my my mom bought like the first black and white television for my grandma mm-hmm. and that was like the first tv in the village all the kids come to a, <laughs> come to grandma's house to watch it you know i mean that's that's what that's like 40 like 40 years ago and and, and i go back to china every every nine years and every time i go it's like a different country <laughs> the, the pace of change is just so fast uh, like i i was uh, i was in china last year and you know, like they, the mobile pay payment, you know, everybody use mobile payment nowadays. Like I was walking around without any cash in my pocket. I was so you getting used uh, like the cashless economy. So when I, when I um, now I'm in Indonesia, right? Uh, mm-hmm. When I flew out of China, I stopped in Hong Kong um, to to fly to Bali. And I, I got out of the airport and left my bags at the airport with my wallet. And, and, you know, it's cause just, I totally, I'm getting so used to just walk around with my phone. And, and then I was shocked when I see people still using coins at the, to purchase the tickets at Subway. I was like, oh my God, I don't have coins. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's different. It's different experience for sure. Yeah, it's. Well, it's it's uh, one of the uh, reasons I followed you because uh, you are talking about China and uh, I appreciate it because I I I try to keep it uh, updated about how how's China developing because I I like it and 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 it's 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 a future it's it's a, it's like you said it's it's coming in a really uh, fast way. And and yeah, that's why uh, I'm I'm really concerned about the Chinese space program because uh, it it can happen that in so, at some point uh, it surpasses the I don't know if it's gonna be uh, soon, but it can if it goes at this pace uh, uh, it can it can happen that it uh, surpasses the, the the United States space program. So, but I, I, one last question. I Okay. I think at the present, uh, I I need to point out at the present, NASA is still very much yeah, yeah. Of, of China because NASA just have a whole wealth of knowledge built up in the last since 1950s, right? Yeah, uh, the, you know, the we, space, we, uh, the no, uh, International no. Space Station, it gives, yeah. yeah. And, and China, China started relatively late into the game, but it's catching up very fast. I I think you'll probably take China another at least another 20 years to, to catch up with US in terms of the space program. That's, that's what I think, yeah. Uh, but uh, there was some concern about the, uh, how the Europe is changing its vision to, well, it was, uh, it was under, um, under uh, Trump's administration that 
Europe was saying, well, if we look to the east and not to the west and see uh, China as a partner in economics and all some other ways, and it, ha it can happen in the future that the, uh, the European um, Space Agency and China can make an agreement and try to to develop uh, to cooperate with the, within with, between them, or it it's or it's. Do you think that it's something that it's something that uh, it's not gonna? I mean, I, I think it would depending on the broader geopolitical uh, situation in Europe. I mean, because Europe is always kind of trying to be its own independent third pole. But then you know there's the U.S. trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to try to pull it back, you know, through its uh, you know or uh, through its institution like NATO, like mm -hmm. like uh, different alliances, um, you know. So so we'll have to see. Uh, but I, I I what I do think is like U.S. is not um, it, it's rel the the relative power of U.S is declining it's important i mean it's, it doesn't mean the absolute kind of absolute sense U us is still very rich very powerful country but because you know new countries are you know the other parts of the world are now now developed in terms of percentage of the globe you know us will be less and less important so we will see we will see i mean Times move fast nowadays. I'm I, I'm very optimistic about the future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you I don't have any more questions. <laughs> okay. Well, I I thank you for reaching out to me to to do this interview, and this is also opportunity, uh, hopefully, to introduce a topic to my audience. And I, you know, I promise next time I will do more homework <laughs> to give you actually more technical details so so thank you and i hope you got what you needed from this uh from this interview yeah i i have a, a some kind of a micro view of of china and i can work from that yeah okay okay uh, and to our audience thank you for for tuning in and uh and click that like button <laughs> subscribe to my youtube channel okay thank you <laughs> Bye -bye. thanks Okay, so oh, uh, uh, stop recording. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so how do I stop recording? Where do I stop? Uh, there's some kind of maybe I'm just. Uh, are you recording, right?